Welcome to a long delayed episode of the Splitfire Gaming Podcast. Um, we're back with a review of a narrative event that we went to uh, last weekend. So Scott's back. I'll yeah. do all the I'll do the hilarious jokes where I go, "Oh, you're always back on this show," and then we'll skip past that as if it's funny. It, so, it works for us. It's a routine now, isn't it? That's it. We don't want to. We don't want to. We don't want to break a habit. You know, we've, we've got something now. We're just going to roll with it for good or bad. Yeah, keep the cliche. Um, if you're wondering why it's been so long, um, moving house is a pain in the arse, and conveyance and solicitors are worse than Doomfire Warlocks in my hate list. So uh, all my stuff's in storage, so I've had to dig out the old computer to actually be able to record something. So the less said about that, the better. Only a six-month delay, huh? Uh, we're into month seven, but oh. uh, until we do this split fire conveyancing podcast, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> so anyway, we went to uh, another of the constituent nations of the United Kingdom, not Wales this time. We went to uh, Scotland for the Ebony Skulls, which is the first for me, but you'd been to um, uh, I've previous been to, events? I've been to the previous two events with, with Andy, and like, they're really good fun, friendly, and genuinely put together in a, in a narrative sort of format um, event. They're not, they're a tournament in name, one, I suppose, that you, you're right, really. They're much more of an event than a than a tournament, and they're, they're good fun. But that was the third we've been to, and I would recommend anyone who's up for doing the trip. This was uh, Tabletop Toad who puts this on. Um, it was, it's near Inverness, is it? Keswick? North, North, North Keswick. Keswick. Um, yes, yeah, so it's it's a long way. Um, <laughs> it's a long way. It's one of the most scenic drives to an event you'll ever do, um, but it's a long, long drive. I, I didn't mind so much, uh, partially because the scenery, and but mainly because I wasn't doing the driving. So it was, it was the journey easy. back that was much more was a little <laughs> more taxing, though, wasn't it? I got, I got spicy. Yeah, that was uh, interesting. After what well, full day of three games getting up early three games and then a five and a half hour journey home. I, I don't envy you for having to do that, but otherwise Got coffee still, so it's fine. Yeah. Coffee. That's the deal. <laughs> that's how cheap my time is. That's it. <laughs> Never mind the petrol price. Just cheap uh, cost of coffee. That'll do. That's it. Uh, so yes, it's a narrative event. Um, you've done the previous one, but do they if they change no, the comp each time? Yeah, or? yeah. So the previous ones weren't linked. So the last one was a doubles event, um, and right. it was a, and it was made doing a Swedish comp. It was really interesting. Um, time before that, truth be told, I can't remember if there was much of a comp at all. It was just twenty five hundred points. You could take a bound monster as well, um, which was wild. Um, but they didn't link to this pack. This is the first one he's done that the next event is directly linked to. Right. And as I understand it, the previous times you went up with lists that destroyed everything and ruined the nice fluffy meta that they had up there, which has then caused a ripple effect on this event in what may or may not have been brought. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is safe to say the first time we went up, um, my list was absolute filth. Um, Is this the flying Kadai? Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, the the first event I took Chaos Dwarfs, and it had a um, a level four flying runner build Taurus. It had a regular Kadai. It had a flying Kadai. Yeah, not a and, flying Kadai instead of a Kadai. A flying Kadai as well as yeah, and, and a Hellbound Iron Demon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, second the- second time we went, I let Andy take the filth that was Chaos Dwarfs, and he and he did, um, a and demon, and a Kadai, and in these twelve hundred and fifty points or whatever we were allowed, and I took fluffy vampires, and by fluffy I mean a ghoul king with scab scrath, and a terrorgeist. Was that ghoul king on a terrorgeist, or is that no, no, separate? couldn't no. couldn't fit couldn't fit uh-huh. in. So he just he just had the um, the flight vampire power. 
So it's only the two screams in that list as opposed to... Exactly. And two well, screams yeah. is barely worth getting out of bed for. Well, that's that's the definition of fluff. Exactly. Um, but yeah, your impact on the space-time continuum up there may, may have had some consequences on what, ha- on what happened over the weekend. Um, but anyway, so just to explain a bit about it, it's, um, it's set in the Vampire Coast on Lustria. And the theme of it was um, you're looking for Luther Harkin's, um ebony skulls, uh, which are hidden around uh, the coast of Lustria. And you could have some... Um, if you found the skulls during the games, they had an in-game effect where you could summon uh, zombie pirates and other items, well, other units, uh, which I thought was quite interesting. I'd never seen that before in previous narratives. Yeah, uh, it was a, a nice individual twist to it, wasn't it? Yeah, um, hang on, I'll get, I'll just get the because uh, there's a list. Depending on how many skulls you got, was uh, what it could do, and you could raise different things. So let's have a look. He published his own um, summoning rules. So let's have a look. Yeah, it, it was really good, and I will come on to talk about it in a lit in later it's just it's a shame that the skulls were at this stage were only used for summoning and it did really encourage people to go convert like vampire zombies and, yeah. and, uh, and stuff like that but i uh, oh, sorry pirate zombies apologies and a couple of people did and it was very cool uh so yeah so if you found one skull um you could summon a unit of 10 zombies in the magic phase two skulls um you could summon 20 um Zombie pirates, uh, and then 16, you could get three animated hulks, and 20, a rotting leviathan, and 24, you could summon the um, Queen Bess cannon. So, you needed five skulls for that, and he's published their uh, profiles for them and everything. So, that, that was quite fun. That it's um, it's quite in depth what he's done. Oh, yeah, a lot of thought. I mean, a lot of it from utilized from like the old Lustria campaign, which I think is very cool. Um, but I love the idea. Uh, and even though they've got BS zero, you can still shoot because why not? Why the hell not? Exactly, hitting on sixes, but who cares? So yeah, a lot of this is um, influenced from the Lustrian campaigns, I'm assuming, because there's also the. Um, well, I'll go back to it. There was also the. And I've got the event pack. You had to roll off before each game for what happened, like an event table, almost like Blood Bowl. Yeah, the the weather. I thought that yeah. I thought that was a really good twist. Actually, that that actually genuinely impacted um, some of the games I played as well. well it did for me twice, uh, yeah. which we'll get on to. <laughs> but the thing I liked about this is both players rolled for it. So, you, like, even if you've rolled, though, oh, I got away with that. Uh, not necessarily because these effects apply to both sides. A lot of them. Um, yeah, I, I like the sometimes the. They can cum- come to- come together to really make a pretty shitty cumulative effect, which was <laughs> hilarious for for some. Yeah, because they run from like minus one movement, um, all shooting ranges, including magic missiles, are halved. Uh, push a unit of your opponent's back directly eight inches away from where it is. Um, plus ones to um, who's going first roll stuff like that. So there's a lot that can go wrong for you and not really that much that can go right. Uh, there's a few yeah, good ones. Yeah, but... yeah there's, there's not a lot of positives there, which I, which I, I, I think I, I try to like the most about it. But I think <laughs> that's... You're going to get screwed a little bit. It was just how, how little you got screwed was the, was the win. But I like that because like Lustria and the Vampire Coast, and that, it's not a nice place. It's, it is uh, supposed to be horrendous to live and operate in. So... That would make sense. Yeah, no, I thought it was again very, very thematic. It was, it was well thought, well put together. Uh, he also had, I mean, he he done, he put a load of effort into the terrain. Terrain was excellent as well. Like, hats off to to Tabletop Toad. They were really well made, really good, and every table was very well themed that you were playing in Lustria. And I found it had loads of terrain on. So it wasn't like these rules were just, oh, if you happen to toe into it once, like you couldn't really move without going through some terrain. 
on the boards I've played on anyway. Yeah, agreed. Uh, which is good if you're going to do the rules. You might as well use them. So these went for stuff. If you rolled low, it was generally bad. And if you rolled high, it was quite good. So the, the jungles went from like, if you're within an inch of it, you suffer D6 strength <laughs> 4 hits with killing blow. So that's nice. Um, however, Again, uh, poison. Again, poison. <laughs> and it's not, you didn't have to be in it. You just have to be with, within one inch of it, which is a subtle but significant difference to terrain rules. Yeah. So you don't even have yeah. to be in it to start taking the kill and blow hits, which is uh, unpleasant. Just, just this jungle absolutely having at you. <laughs> Uh, you'd have the same for swamps and things so um, rolling low the piranhas would eat you with kill and blow rolling high you got blessed by the lizard men gods and one yep. of your units got uh, one of these on this chart here of, uh, I did get some skeleton archers with plus one movement that's right what did Lightning. I get I think I got um, a, my archers got swift stride which of course they need <laughs> I mean to be fair high off archers are well known to be incredible in combat, so that is, that's probably yeah, a good that's true. It didn't it didn't happen in that game, but in theory, yeah, that's fine. Um so I, I really liked all this um extra stuff for a narrative event because it's it really added to the to the whole flavour of the event, didn't it? And yeah. I think because it's it, it's running into the next event as well, um, we'll probably start seeing that continue to evolve. Um, and I know they're looking at alternative things for the ebony skulls to be used on at the next event as well. So, yeah, because it rolls over. If you go to the yeah. next one, you keep your tally of skulls. Um, and another thing I thought was good was that there wasn't anything stupid about how to collect the skulls. Like you have to surrender your movement, or you kind of <coughs> shoot, or you kind of act. Just if you were in three inches of a skull, you claimed it, and that was that was it. Yeah, I like that. Three inches at the start of your turn, that skull was just yours. Yeah. So you've got the flavour and you've got the taste of it without having a massive impact actually on the game, which I thought was a really nice balance. It's really who can get to it first to claim it um, rather than having, yeah, because in like 40k or stuff like that, to secure an objective, you've got to give up move and shoot and psychic or magic or whatever. Uh, I thought that would have that would have been less fun. Agreed. Because you still want your unit to do something. Um, yeah, you want you want to take part in the event and 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 sort of absorb the narrative, but you don't want to impact the game that you're actually there to play, which is Warhammer. Yeah, so I really like that. Um, what else was there on the? I think that was it for that. For the, um, the slightly amended scoring, so to get yes, like, that was it. You use a twenty nil system, but to to get twenty nil, it was like two thousand five hundred one. Yeah, and it above was, it was. It was, a it was lot very difficult. To 20 yeah, difficult to twenty nil someone, which I, I had not that there was no nothing against. Otherwise, it was. I think that was pretty much everything went through. That was non-standard. Otherwise, all the FAQs and the actual comp pack itself was in line with the um, the triple crown triple crown comp pack, which I thought was very cool. Um, he, the tabletop tour just used the triple crown guys comp system. Um, which I think we kind of all agree as the is is these days the standard comp system used in in yeah. certainly in the UK for gaming and it's, it's excellent. Hats off to those guys; it's amazing. Um, no no comps perfectly balanced, but they do a really good job at keeping it as balanced as they can. The um, only other thing that was significantly different was you could um, hire twenty five percent of your points as mercenaries. Yeah, and twenty five percent. So you could take bound monsters. In your as part of your rare slot, but you could then also take a twenty five percent of your army could be mercenaries. Um, you're right, I forgot. It is on here. So it find is. It. You, you can have um, up to twenty five percent of your army, army could be mercenaries. Um, you had to take a lord or a hero, and then you could take core special, any number of core, up to two special or one rare. So um, uh, I must admit I didn't I didn't really read the pack that well beforehand. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I don't want to expect something. But nope, me neither. Um, um, so we, you know, it did lead, and this, this is to be fair. I think this is changing slightly for his, the next event. But yeah, you could take any any amount of 
or twenty five percent of your forces mercenary, and it didn't come out of your ray or 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 special etc. Was just within the rest. Twenty five percent, yeah. So you may not may or, may or may not have seen a dark elf army that had a steam tank and a witch hunter. Well, I definitely saw that. Army. I definitely saw that as well. <laughs> and a uh, it, yeah, well, get it, get onto that. I mean, you, you, you've right, not to spoil anyone, you rightfully won the Mankius List Award. Well, I'm on that now, so I'll, yeah, there was um, <laughs> there was some awards at the end, uh, which I will put here. So, Greatest General, uh, who won, uh, Greatest Snotling, the person who had the least points, and then the Mankius List was the um, the the filthiest list as by popular acclaim. Um, Landslide so by all accounts. Yeah, by all accounts, it was uh, Golden Toad and Greatest Monster for Best Painted Army and Best Painted Monster, and then True Highlander, so he gained the most event points. Uh, so that was what we were all playing for. Um, so we'll come to the end. No, no spoilers for that, please. We'll, we'll get to that at the end. No spoilers. We may, as a team, have uh, picked up a few of them. Not as a team, but as a as a, <laughs> as a, as a northeast contingent. Uh, any anyway, right? So um, that was the gist of the event, um, what the comp was, and the theme of it. What uh, what list did you bring then? I know it's the year of the Tomb Kings. For it, is, you. it is. It is the year of the Tomb Kings. So they're out for the second event. Second or third event? Third yeah. event. We've had Cardiff, we've had... They were at the narrative at the back end of last year. Yeah, and that's they've been, right. They've been to Cardiff, so they are out for their third event. Um, and my list was uh, fairly settled, to be honest, but it was... Um, uh, there's a Tomb King, uh, level four, Nekakora, paying the tax that all Tomb King players must. <laughs> Skullstorm, take oh. it. There was a level two... On death, because obviously I'm without spirit reach, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even leaving the house. I'm, I'm not. Um, so they were my characters. Then there was you know two... they've got aspect of the dread knight. If you want, you know, you should invest in. in that that. Is, I, I do roll that spell an <laughs> awful lot, which is that's, very upsetting. That's fine for you because you can just automatically default to spirit leech. Can and do. <laughs> um, then call was two blocks of nineteen archers. Um, Standard and musician, a block of thirty-eight warriors, um, just with shields and full command. Uh, three chariots with the banner of eternal flame. Then going into special, I had two war sphinxes, both with the fiery breath upgrade, and a unit of four snakes uh, with a banner. Uh, and then for rare, I had the casket of souls and the Kemric Titan from the Monstrous Arcanum expansion, which is a whopper of a point sink. So the Kemric Titan has made a, another appearance in your list then. Yeah. Yeah. So this one, um, he's, he was comped a little bit, uh, close to what triple crown have comped it, um, which is more than Cardiff did, but it wasn't comped as much as triple crowns has comped it now. If that makes sense, so he rules as written. Um, so the actual rules, <laughs> everything he does is always strikes last, so he can thunder stomp before he does his special attack. Um, which I'm sure is not inherently how it was intended, to be fair. So I don't inherently disagree with the change. Um, so we were playing special attacks first before thunder stomps, and that was the that was the that's all they'd comped in their pack. But um, in the Triple Crown pack, for future reference, um, they play... that you would, One of the rules from the Titan is that it can't be wounded by any attack strength four or below, but Triple Crown don't play that. So in this so, one, was the other playing it that way? Yes, it wasn't yeah. in their comp to remove it, so they were playing that it couldn't be wounded by anything that was strength below strength four. Right. Yeah, that's quite nasty. But I think we've discussed this before. I, um, personally, I, I think don't I, I don't really like changing the rules um, from rules as written. So if you don't like what it does, I would say you can't 
take it as a whole rather than start amending the rules, but that's just me. No, I mean, we get you and I have chatted. Like, I'm the same. If if they don't, if people don't like the rules for it, like the whole strength four, or whatever, I'd rather just ban it from the event rather yeah. than mess around with the rules personally. Because without the Titan, truth be told, I would have just taken a a Hero Titan, um, probably a Colossus because I'm a fluffy guy, and a Scorpion would probably maybe there's a few more warriors. So like the list wouldn't have drastically differed, but it would have played slightly differently. Yeah. But then I don't run tournaments, so my opinion exactly. is worthless. I'll, so. I'll, I'll happily give an opinion, but it won't yeah. stop us attending or whinging no, about. Like, I, I won't whinge too much because I still love attending tournaments and I'll just not take things if I don't like it in their comp. So what was your overall comp score? Uh, plus one. That's low, isn't it? That's, uh... um, well, the Titans are minus three. <laughs> Um, Titans are minus three, the Casket of Souls are minus one, so there's there's a chunk of four minuses in there. Um, but this has been your build for quite a while, hasn't it? Yeah. To be honest, it's pretty much the build I took to Cardiff. Um, Cardiff was extra points, so there was a few more things in there, but in reality, um, this is the list that I'll be playing for most of the year, to be honest, other than when I don't take the Titan. So it's one of two lists, so very settled. So you've got it uh, fine tuned now, then. That's probably a push, but yeah, let's let's well, say that. I know when we played <laughs> that practice game, and I couldn't believe that that Titan it just wouldn't die. It's toughness eight, isn't it? So toughness, toughness eight, ten wounds. So it's got a bounce spell that heals itself as well. Even white lions can't ruin it on the six. And uh, I mean, it does die to weight of attacks. Is the was, is the reality? It was archers, isn't it? In the end, it killed it. Take this last it's, wound it's, off. It's it's archers yeah archers just they wound it the same as a white lion does so it is like the thing about those big monsters and things like that is it doesn't really matter how effective they are for me it's like i'm now concentrating on that what am i going to do about that to the the point where you start to focus entirely on that and forget about the rest of the army just to be honest that is that is one of the things that like the titans in the list for it's a psychological it's a thing, as, as well. Uh, as a, yeah, it, it is. Um, and a lot of the time, it doesn't actually do a lot. It's just there to absorb a lot of focus while the rest of the army does stuff. Yeah. And with the two sphinxes, I've got three toughness eight beasts. Well, that's another thing because it's that's a potential. Is it four d six total thunder stomps you can be doing? If I get them all into combat, yeah, it'd be two d six strength eight and two d six strength five thunder stomps. Horrendous, because their toughness are they toughness eight as well? Yeah, yeah, toughness yeah. eight, strength five, toughness eight. So they're... only five wounds each on them, though. Oh, is that all? That's all. Yeah, they're not going to really. In the... I suppose they've got they've got five up, haven't they? But the uh, the, the Titan's got a three up. Oh, yeah, so... the Titan. The, yeah, the Titan actually comes with a solid armor save. Mm, yeah, nasty that. <laughs> For a plus one as well, but yeah, it's you know I think it's a pretty solid list overall. Uh, well, um, I had a bit of a palaver with lists for this because originally I was going to take Kairos as a mono Zinch list, and I painted fifty pink horrors and four heralds, and then I ran out of time to paint Kairos and the um, two soul grinders. So that went on the back burner because this was supposed to be the year of demons because I was supposed to be, I don't know, I've, I've not mentioned this, but I was supposed to be moving house by now. <laughs> uh, so painting has been quite haphazard. So that I, I ran out of time to do that. So I thought, right, we'll do a high elf list then, but we'll do something different. I'll do a death mage on a moon dragon um, and see how he goes. Then I had a practice game with him where he... Um, got into the side of a unit of Temple Guard with a Phoenix Guard in the front and managed to cast Purple Sun. I thought, this is brilliant. Uh, you know, the game's sewn up now. Don't need to worry about anything here. And then he misfired for the Purple Sun and rolled a six and killed himself. And uh, I, as much as I, I love this game, you know, when you just feel like that's a bit too much, like I, I actually want to flip <laughs> the table at this point. Uh, so... Uh, if that if there was like a twitch in the eye when I was I was playing um, 
uh, Chris, if I started to like convulse, that's why. Because everything had lined up fine except for actually getting him to send the vortex in the right direction. So, uh, yeah. So I lost the plot with that. And I thought, nah, to hell with it. I'll go back to me Cardiff build, which is um, Archmage, uh, level four Archmage on Shadow, uh, C Helm, BSB with the, oh, so the, the mage, I don't need to say this, but he comes with the Book of Haworth and Talisman of Preservation. Standard. Standard. Um, so Lord and C Helm with the Armor of Kalidor, um, the Handmaiden, the Ever Queen with the Reaver Bow and the Potion of Strength which is, I think, one of the best combinations in the book. Not, well, the top one is Book of Hoeth and Talisman of Preservation, but... Next, though. Next is a strong show. 30 archers, 30 spearmen, uh, 39 phoenix guard, 5 shadow warriors, 2 bolt throwers, 2 great eagles, and 20 sisters of Avalon, which came I out. really, I really like this list that you put together, to be honest. I think it's just a... It's Generally, nice, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think it's just a cool list. It's the only thing it can't really deal with is extremely high toughness, um, unless you're all pit of shades. But other than that, it's got a bit. Of, it's got. It's a very big shooty list because I really, really like the Sisters of Avalon. Um, because when they actually fire, they're quite devastating. Uh, and the handmaiden makes them quick to fire as well, so I like that combination. Yeah, but plus, I like it. I like it. It's, it's theme and the the handmaiden actually buffs the units you're supposed to buff, unlike the special character high elf ones that work well, better in there. Yeah, so, uh, they've got units. nothing more to teach their own units, so they've got to go to the other ones and give them a ward save. Like the anointed doesn't need to give his ward save to the phoenix guard, so he can give it to white lions, so on and so forth. Uh, My lines need the help as well, obviously. Of course they do, yeah. Generally. Um, ben, I do like your list, though. I think it's a good, like, nice list. I, could, I, I would... It needs a bit more chaff. But I don't know what I would do to change it. Because the Eagles are good, but they've got, they've got too much to do. Yeah. There's only two of them. So I might... If I did it again, I might rethink it. But I do like the list. It's got it. It looks. It's got good combat blocks. It's got shooting. It's got stuff that can fly and hold stuff up. And for a change, Shadow didn't let me down like it did in Cardiff. Hey. So I felt um, not as frustrated with it this time around. Um, but yeah, plus two. So you know, everyone who says I only take Banner of the World, Dragon, White Lion, Alarial hordes, it's not true. That's it. You you ride that moral high ground while you've got it, Mark. <laughs> I only take that to Triple Crown, despite popular belief to the contrary. Um, but I didn't make any zombie pirates uh, because I didn't read the comp until it was too late, which is my tradition, really. Uh, yeah, standard. We'll have Andy read it to us on the car while we're driving. At that point, you're thinking, well, I can't really... Build and paint oh, well. some zombies in the car. You know, five hour drive. Yeah, five hour drive is all right, but it's not really enough time to do that. Um, yeah, that was my list. That was the, the saga of going through. So I've got, I've now got a mostly painted demon army, a seventy percent painted death mage on dragon model, which I never used. So they're just cluttering up the. The limited space I've got now before I move house. And then went back to something that was already pre-painted, but that's fine. You will but, use it though. Yeah, I, I I did enjoy using them, and I'll I'll be using them at another narrative event later in the year. Uh, the Dragon Mage, well, no, the Death Mage, Dragon Mage, something different. But yeah, that was my list. Um, familiar. I'd used it at least five times before at Cardiff, so I sort of knew what it did. Um. And then we went on to the, the three games. So there's only one day. Um, so there's only three games rather than the two-day event with five. Uh, and they were all the three different scenarios. So I think if you got the scenarios, because I, I couldn't yeah, find them. So, yeah, so scenario one, um, standard deployment. 
And you got bonus victory points based on how many of your troops were across the board. Um, so you imagine that the table was bit, was cut into sort of four sections. To get out of your own deployment zone, you got 50 points, 50 VPs for every unit. If you got across the halfway line, 100 victory points per unit. And if you got a unit into the opponent's deployment zone, you got 200 victory points. Um, and it was a standard six-game turn ultimate deployment. So again, didn't differ massively, but enough to make you want to play the scenario. Yeah, uh, well, we'll get on to that. Um, <laughs> so how did you do in game one? Uh, game one, I I was playing Chris and his warriors, um, and it's a, it's an Archeon on foot list. Um it was it, it was a it was a it was a fun list to be fair. You had Archeon, Festus, and a BSB and a big block of Nurgle warriors. Otherwise, there was a Hell Cannon, some Marauders, a couple of units of dogs. Uh, maybe it's something else. I'm not hundred percent sure. But um, game one, I I won sixteen four. Um, essentially, it was it was how much of my army would it take. To end up getting through the block of thirty chaos, thirty Nurgle warriors, Archeon, Festus, and and the BSB, who was stubborn because at one point, and I hadn't realised, uh, I won combat by about twenty two, and then he was like, "Sorry, I'm stubborn." Ten, I was like, are oh, you <laughs> son of a bitch? Yeah, um, doesn't wasted your effort. Yeah, there. yeah, what a what a fool. Um, but eventually, yeah, broke through, managed to get a few things across the table. Um, good fun game. Um, it was it was quite brutal. I think by the end of the game, the only things left alive were the Kemrick Titan, the Casket of Souls, the Chariot Unit, and um, a block of archers with the Hierophant in. That was it. Everything else from both sides was completely dead. It was... It was a genuinely brutal game. Was that the one where all that was left on the other side was the Hell Cannon? Or is that another one? Oh no, I killed the Hell Cannon. I killed the Hell Cannon. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I came over at one point and there's just like where's where's both armies gone? <laughs> oh yeah, it was it was wild. It it got in after that after I won by twenty two points, twenty two um twenty two and then he was stubborn. Archeon then proceeded to turn around and uh, slap one of the uh, War Sphinxes to death, and then the next one. I was like, ah, oh, sad times in consecutive combats. But I, I got him in the end, and then, but yeah, no, the Hell Cannon ended up getting um, stomped to death by the Camera Titan. Standard for the, the Camera Titan? Yeah, you know, this is the game where the Titan did the most. It stomped, it killed the entire unit of um, Archer uh, Marauders. Um, might have done something else, and it killed a hell cannon. Uh, and again, proved a massive distraction. But yeah, no, it was a good first game. Um, Chris is a good, a good opponent. He was, he was a good laugh. Lots of crazy stuff happened, so it was, it was good. That's a good start. It was sixteen four. Yes, yeah, strong start. Uh, well, I was playing the Empire um, the first game. Uh, which was let's have a look at the list. Uh, was that James's empire? Yeah, it was James's empire. So it's um, Elspeth von Dragon on a Carmine Dragon. Um, this is really nice. You don't see her very often. Um, no. Uh, you had a uh, block of forty halberdiers, ten uh, inner circle knights, a great cannon, two units of five pistoliers, uh, a hurricane, a volley gun, and the Marienburg land ship. Brilliant. Which was the genuine thing in resin. Yeah, the real one. Which is like a brick. Um, oh, I've got to say, sorry, probably that made us think, because you said landship, Chris had a Chaos War Mammoth in his yes, Warriors did. list. That was brilliant. I, I really and it was that. a proper one, and it weighs about a ton. Yeah, that, you could kill someone with that as well. That was. Um, yeah. Sorry, didn't mean to put in, but that, that, as soon as you said landship, I was like, oh my God, that's what else was in the list, that massive thing. Um, Which I struggle to deal with. Can't stomp it. Oh, you can stomp it. Yeah. I, I killed it with chariots in the end. 
<laughs> After it in one turn did 20 Thunder Stomp wounds in one round of combat. Ouch. Yeah. Spicy. Uh, well, in my usual style, this is another one where I didn't play the mission at all, uh, which came back to bite me quite significantly. Uh, so it's it's basic battle line. So I deployed there with the Phoenix Guard in the middle and the um, sisters at the front, spearmen behind them and the archers at the side. Uh, my plan was to um, shoot Elspeth turn one so that she was dead. Um, and obviously I, would, I rolled the, the thing where you half your your distances for shooting, so couldn't do that. That was quite irritating. Um, so, not to worry. Um, the, the You can't see it there, but there's some... You can just see there's some knights in front of the sisters. So they charged the sisters. Um, they killed just enough of them with a stand and shoot to cause a panic test, which they this is like... This is what it must be like playing me because he failed the panic test uh, twice. They ran off back through the hell cannon, uh, sorry, the hell blaster volcano and uh, his engineer. Um, so well, that's that's quite lucky. Um, the shadow warriors moved up. They got shot a bit, but they were all right. They managed to charge into the cannon. So they were heroes there for there they are slicing the, the cannon crew up. So they actually got their points back before Yay. they got brutally killed. Uh, where are we? Uh, and then for some reason I just sort of stayed there, <laughs> where the object of the game is to get across. Because um, you know you're saying about big things, big monsters like oh you focus on them. So Elspeth was sort of dancing around them at the side. And like, oh, he's, he's going to cast Purple Sun, but that's not really a problem. But they've got that Dragon's Breath thing where it's D3 automatic wounds in a straight line. So, was, But I don't know why I was worried about that, because there's only so many... They've got a ward save, the Phoenix Guard. There's only so many of them that can, that can take damage from that. And it's only a one-off use. So what I should have done is just gone straight for the Halberdiers with the Phoenix Guard. And then I was concerned about the terrain in the middle. And when I was looking back, like, why didn't you just run straight at the halberdiers with the Phoenix Guard? Everything would have been fine. But in the end, I sort of ended up defensively around here. The archers, I think they failed a terror check from being charged by the dragon or something. No, I think either that or the when the repeater bolt thrower died, they panicked and ran through everything and rallied on the other side. And then at the end, uh, they were charged by... Uh, the Carmine Dragon, which I've got here, I think. Yeah, so, and then they killed Elspeth <laughs> in combat. Archers, honestly, the the, the, the real combat machines of Warhammer. They've, they've got they've racked up quite a series of kills. These these archers. Um, yeah. Um, so I didn't lose much. Oh, the the big bit was where the Shadow Mage pit of shades the land ship. Before it nice. got anywhere near, like well, that's that went quite well. So shadow was starting to pay off for us a bit. Um, but Elspeth didn't die till turn five, so I couldn't get magic superiority until right at the end, where it didn't really matter. Um, so I think if I'd played the mission, he had about four units or three or four units in my deployment zone by the end because he had his um, fast cavalry. Uh, he split his character out of the. Uh, he split his beast mage out of the uh, the hurricu- sorry the Albedea unit. Um, so by the end, he racked up a load of points on the mission objectives, even though I hadn't really lost anything. Uh, so by the time, so once again, not playing the mission massively cost you, then yeah. I realised in turn five, like there's a mission here I should be playing, because <laughs> I thought, oh, I'm quite, I was quite ahead on points. But then they just all ratcheted back down because he had loads of mission points. So it ended up as a 10-10 draw, uh, which is all my fault. Not playing the mission. <laughs> the same thing that happened in the original narrative I went to. I really needed is. a tattoo. Play the, mis- play the fucking play mission, the mission on me hand. I'll come up to you at the start of an event next time <laughs> and just sort of like screen play the mission in your face. Yeah, so that was... Um, it was a good game. It was a really... Um, 
nice guy to play. Uh, and the land ship and um, Carmine Jagner, that were brilliant. And he yeah, sculpted. Very cool. He sculpted the. He put the effort in and actually sculpted the. Um, built the pirates and the. Uh, he, he had everything. He had the full lot. Yeah. He had, he had the Queen's was, best cannon. He had this. He had the Hulks and yeah, everything. Yeah, the rotting cool. Leviathan thing. So he he'd gone all out for it. He really embraced the whole idea behind the narrative, hadn't he? He clearly hadn't just read the comp on the way up. Um, like, Amateur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. Um, but yeah, uh, fully deserved because he played the game, he played the mission, and I didn't. Um, so even though I was ahead on what I'd killed, because uh, I, I think all I lost was a couple of bolt throwers, the archers ended up dying, they got ran down by a crazy um, frenzied Carmine dragon after it monster reacted. Uh, a couple of shadow warriors. It wasn't much. Most of the army was intact. Um, but he equalized the score by playing the mission. In the mission, which is a lesson to you all. Damn him. <laughs> so that was a 10 turn, which, yeah, was, I couldn't complain about it because it's entirely my fault. Like realizing in turn five, hang on, you're supposed to get to the other side. <laughs> and I, I thought yeah. I'll, I'll try to catapult the, the Phoenix guard. I thought I'll I charged into I forget what it was. It might have been pistol ears or something low points wise. I'll charge. Oh, it was his archer. It was his archer detachment. And I thought I'll see if I can overrun and see how far I can get with them. See if it might. You know, if you roll spike high dice, you might get to the middle ground. They managed yeah. to get out of their deployment zone, so they got fifty <laughs> points. Um, the 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 hero eagle, which was shot loads by the pistolers and stuff, with one wound left, he charged the rear of the um, Hurricanum and killed it, it, ran it down, and then into the back of the halberdiers, which pinned them for a bit. So if I'd done that earlier or got the Phoenix Guard forward, I maybe could have dealt with them, but it just didn't play the mission. That's the lesson. Play the mission. But anyway, 10-10. It was a fun game. Nice to play yeah. against the land ship. Nice to play against... Oh, yeah. Uh, ...as you don't see very often. And the Carmine Dragon's stunning, so... Yeah, it's a beaut, isn't it? Yeah. So there, that was that one. And uh, then... Oh, which is, I've added, just for... The skulls were quite literally just in bits of scenery around the table. Yeah. Which I stayed in place like all event and you could pick them up across. They were just um, the tiny was, Citadel skulls. Um it's really hard to yeah. see they were. <laughs> Finding them actually was challenging both for your units and for yourself. Uh, I think I got I think I only got one. Because again I, got, I, I wasn't playing the mission. I think I got two in game uh I can't remember. I don't know how many I came out with at the end of the event, but I can't remember how them went games one and two. I think I got three. No, we got th uh, uh, yeah three. And I got in game one. He did manage to. He got two or three, and he did manage to summon some um, pirate gunners. Ah, oh, quality. Which, I'm glad he got to use them. Yeah, because they went straight in front of the Phoenix Guard and died. But it doesn't matter because they're not worth any points. So they just yeah. held the Phoenix Guard. There, though, that's yeah. all that matters. So that was. That was in the spirit of it. So then game two was sort of corner-to-corner corner deployment, um, but still 24 inches apart on a diagonal. Um, and then, again, the mission of this one was that you were looking for artifacts around the table. So the table was then split into six sections, and yeah, for every two foot sections, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, for every section you controlled, you gained a hundred victory points at the end of the game. Um, and to control it, you just had to have a unit in, but a core unit would trump a rare or a special, for example. So if you both had a core unit in, nobody got it. If one of you had a special you or a rare in, and the other person had a core unit in, the core unit could claim it. It wasn't contested. It was only contested by core units. Yeah, this is uh, because this is an interesting one. Of do you go and concentrate your stuff to try to beat the other army, or do you spread your stuff out to try and claim the victory points? Yeah, 
Yeah, it was a different one, this one. I liked it, though. Yeah, I, liked I thought, it. again, once again, I liked the thought behind it, and it didn't, it wasn't too intrusive to just the game itself, if that makes sense. It was just a nice add-on yeah. to the game. Because you could choose to ignore it if you thought there's going to be more points in destroying big, expensive units. Yeah, yeah. Or you could scatter, like, avoidance, and just try and keep hold of as many sections as you could. So my opponent for game two was um, Liam, who you played in game three. Yeah. And we've already spoiled this one as far as awards go, but Liam won the Mankiest List Award. And for the benefit of everyone, I'll read through his list. You'll see why. Um, yes, you will see why. So it had um, Marathi. It then had a Death Hag BSB on a cauldron. Um. It won't be surprised to find out that she was in a block of 27 witches um, with the Razor standard. Uh, he then had a Master and a Dark Peg with a, a one-up save standard. Um, two units, sorry, a unit of five Dark Riders, a unit of 20 Dread Spears uh, to round out the core along with the Witch Elves, um, a Cold One Chariot, and a Repeater Bolt Thrower. And then... A, of his own rare five warlocks, which you know, no no filthy dog elf player ever leaves without. <laughs> then this is where things get really spicy. <laughs> um, he also then had mercenaries, um, and by mercenaries, I mean he had a witch hunter and then a steam tank. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then from the monstrous, the like the schools of binding, he also had a Kadai destroyer, so it was a Filthy Dark Elf list with Marathi, a Witch Elf, and a Witch Elf Horde, and, <laughs> and Doomfire Warlocks, plus a Steam Tank, plus a Kadai Destroyer. Yeah. It know, was uh, rightfully <laughs> the most disgusting list at the event. It was hideous. You know, I said the ripple effect of your earlier reign of destruction. Yeah, to be fair, I played Liam at the first event. He did when mention I had that, me, yeah. When I had my really dirty Chaos Dwarf list. And he did... Take pride in pointing at the client and say, This is only here because of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't have a lot to say about it. He was it was fair. But I mean, <laughs> it was an absolutely disgusting list. I mean, yeah. That's... A steam tank, a Kadai, a Witch Elf Horde, Brolocks, and Marathi. Come on, people. Come on. <laughs> Jesus you know, Christ. You know, the toughness problem that elves have. Well, he's a toughness six unbreakable monster. And he is a Toughness 6, Unbreakable Steam Tank. Oh my god, it was hideous. Absolutely hideous. Um, but anyway, this was a very like a very staccato game. Um, didn't really get a lot done on either side, to be honest. Um, he was very dubious about um, the Titan um, and he could avoid a lot of stuff. Duff. I didn't really have a lot of range to particularly threaten. Um, so to be honest, we didn't we didn't make it past turn four, which is a real shame. Um, and it ended up as a 10-10. Um, I, I had two bits of the board versus his one. Um, there was like a hundred and odd victory points in it. It was... I don't want to say it was a non-event because I don't mean that in a bar, like, as if I'm having a go because I'm not, but it was... You know, he, he obviously didn't, hadn't seen a lot of the things I was bringing before. I had a lot of queries. We it was very stop starty, um, but it was, it was still fun. It was a lot. You know, it was just very draw. Unfortunately, drawn out. We didn't get the full game in. Did much um, die so yeah, or it's just? Uh, I lost. I killed the Kadai, which always feels good as a cursed off player. <laughs> Um, and I think the Dark Riders are the Warlocks, and I think I lost a unit. Uh, not a lot happened, to, to be like, brutally honest. Um, I took 785 VPs, and he took 640. It was That's a, really close. A really close, really low scoring. In fact, this game prevented us from beating Andy's uh, scoring points. Yeah, uh, more, more, more on that later. 
but uh, no, it was it was a close game. Didn't, didn't not a lot happened really to talk about. Um, and I took a walk away with a ten ten. Uh, sometimes happens, doesn't it? If, uh... It does. Yeah, it does. Like these things do happen. Uh, well, my game two was against the Lizard Men, which was. Uh, uh, Rebecca. Rebecca's, yeah. So she had um, Slime Mage Priest who won in Deliberations, Gorok, everybody likes him. Love him. Uh, Saurus Cowboy, um, Skink Chief on a Pterodon, and then a Holy. block of 30 Saurus Warriors, um, a Skink Cohort, I like them, you don't see them very often. Uh, 10 Skink Skirmishes, Chameleon Skinks, a Steg, uh, Unit Temple Guard, and an Ancient Steg. Razor Dons, who I've never seen before. You'll never see You'll them. Never see them. And one salamander. Um I think Rebecca said she'd only played twice before. Ah, um, cool. I she's just getting into it, which is really good to see. Yeah. It's always nice to see new new people taking up the game. So similar, we we only got four turns in. Um but that's that that's fine, because it's like if you've never if you've only played two games before it's going to take longer, which is fine. So we have to go because, yeah. Look, we we play a dead game, so that when you do come across people who are just getting into it, it's really lovely to actually be able to help them get into the like, into the scene a bit more. Especially in an event like this, where it's it's narrative, it's all about the fun of the game. So really nice to yeah, it's fine. help someone along. Not, getting I'd, in, rather, into it. Yeah, I'd rather than because it's now it's not very encouraging if you're getting no one's helping you and. You're not sure what things do and stuff like that, and I, I don't mind because something happens in the game where, like, well, that, that's how it's set up anyway. So I just lined up. It was the sort of meeting engagement deployment. Yeah. So I lined up. Um, uh, Phoenix Guard. There's nothing really unique or clever about that. She had the um, Saurus in the front, flanked by the two. Stegs and then the temple guard and the slime at the back. The razor dons went off on one side, the skinks were on the other side, and the salamander was with them. Uh, she openly said, Look, I'm I'm playing fully narrative. My objective is to get as many my personal objective is to get as many scores as possible. And that's what I'm playing for. Uh, that's great. That's what it's you know, that's the the narrative yeah, event. So great. So she went up uh, with a skink dude, vanguarded, got claimed some skulls, claimed some skulls. Um, I think she got, there was five on the table, I think she got three of them. Um, bit cage on movement, moved up a tiny bit, raised ones, went around the side to try and shoot the one of the eagles. Um, and then my spearman moved up and got charged by <laughs> the razor dons, the razor dons and the <laughs> steg. Now you notice Ockham's mind razor is here, so she declared this charge. Um, so I said, "Are you absolutely sure you want to do this? Because they're now strength nine, um, and if they don't fluff, they'll probably blend everything here." But she said, and which is probably right. Um, they're going to get charged next turn anyway, and I'm probably just as likely to cast Mind Razor. So you'll get your impact attacks, you'll get your plus one for charging, you'll get your flank. Um, and if you survive, you probably, this is the best time you're going to get for com for combat res. It's just fair enough. Um, <laughs> that was made, I did like, I made sure to point out that what the spell does and what it would mean, because yeah, yeah. it's, it's not fair to. Uh, oh, by th afterwards, you've done it now. So, yeah, did you know there was a strength nine? <laughs> now, strength nine, yeah, no, for sure. Like, you did the right thing, yeah. So, I d didn't want to do any like daft, you know, un not unsporting, unsporting like, conduct. yeah. I don't, didn't want to do anything like that with someone who's new you to did, the game. You did, you did yourself proud by playing the game the right way, Mark, <laughs> even as a high elf, even as a high elf, correct. So, um, I think th th they lost a few, but. As expected, the, the spearmen with mind rays are just phenomenal. Um, they killed the uh, steg and the salamanders fled, and sorry, the brazer dons fled, uh, and they chased after them and ran them down. Um, so that's what you know. You were saying table quarters. Do you go for the table quarters or do you go for 
um, killing points. So the the spearmen were like just on the border after the overrun of um, two table court, uh, two table sections. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know whether to leave them where they were and claim that, or bring them round and try and get some points off the um, unit. And I've sort of worked out a bit that the if I could destroy the unit, it's probably worth more than holding a table section. Yeah. So they came round. Um, the Phoenix Guard charged, and the Speeman charged into the f- first unit of um, Saurus. Uh, they had the withering on them. <laughs> Again, Shadow Magic was really came into it. This, so their toughness two at this point, um, and the Phoenix Guard just went straight through them. Uh, then in the next turn, this I think this is turn three or four. They got charged by the Temple Guard. Um, I don't know if I've got a picture of that, actually. Possibly not. Uh, no. That's... Yeah, that's the last one of it. Uh, so anyway, so they got charged by the Temple Guard. Uh, we ran out of time. Uh, the, they lost combat, but um, the Phoenix Guard got charged by the Temple Guard, the Cowboy, and the remaining Steg. They won the combat, um, but one of them didn't break and we're over time then so if that doesn't break they can't run anything else down so they won't move so there's nothing more that can be done so the game ended at that point so that was a 15-5 um because i did play the game the the mission at this point so the the eagle the archers claimed the one table section the um the Sisters of Avalon shot everything on the other side and they claimed that section. Then I used the Eagle to claim another section. So I think I had four sections in total. Um, and if it had gone on to turn five, um, I would have got the general and that unit, but we didn't have time. So it was 15 five at the end. But. Um, Play the mission. That's that's the that's what I learned from this one. Nice, nice. At last, yeah. And cast wither. They cast the withering. It's good. Ah, oh, shadow magic's amazing. So then that takes up the the third game. Yep. So this one was the lengthways deployment. Um, twenty four inches each deployment zone, twenty four inches apart. Um. <clears throat> This one, uh, you had to allocate all the Ebony Skulls that you'd collected during the first two games. You had to allocate the units and or your general during this game. And then every time one of those, and then every time you picked a skull up in the game, you had to also allocate it to a unit until every unit was carrying one. Then you could start giving multiples. And when you killed a unit... Took one of the ebony, one of the skulls off them, and added it to your collection. Um, and then the big difference here was that fleeing troops could not flee off the board, and overrunning troops could not overrun off the board. The the board was essentially that you couldn't leave it for any reason at all. They auto rallied, and the next time they were able to rally, they automatically rallied. Um, oh yes, yeah, which is helpful for me because I'm very great at taking leadership tests um yeah otherwise there's no additional victory points for anything the collection all the skulls at this stage were very much in line for that they carry over into the next event so victory points were just standard victory points yeah there was no um there's no bonuses it was no bonuses it was more about claiming skulls for the next one yeah yeah, well, stealing. And it was, a, it was, it was a, so because it was the length, the, the length of his deployment as well. It was quite interesting. Yeah. Um, stuff ended up all over the place. So I was playing. Um, I was playing Graham, uh, another dark elf player. Um, very different feel. This one, uh, dreadlord on a cold one with lots of stuff. Uh, standard, plasma preservation, ogre blade, one up, four up. Um, a level four sorceress on dark, a BS on a cold one, a master BSB on a cold one, um, another master on a dark peg, a level two on dark on foot, six dark riders, six dark riders, ten dark shards, 
20 Dread Spears, Cold One Chariot, Hydra, 7 Cold One Knights, which is there for where all these characters are bunkered in, 5 Harpies, a Bold Threat, and 5 Doomfire Warlocks. You don't see many um, Cold One buses there. No, you, you know you really don't. And to, to, to be fair, if what happened in this game is anything to judge by, I know why. <laughs> so this, this is a really good game. I, I'll like come out. With this. I, I ended up coming away with a seventeen-three win, and until about turn three, I think it was. It was, it was about mid mid game. It was very very close. It was a right flank. I mean, the left flank. I was sort of quite happily doing Kemrick Titan things on that left flank. Uh, in the back side, doing very well. Me snakes are once again letting us down and getting absolutely hammered in combat off a unit of five warlocks, which is just all sorts of upsetting, to be honest. Two attacks each with poison, and you just—I think you did eight wounds on me snakes in one round of combat. I was like, <laughs> ah, well, that was not what I was expecting. Anyway, the dice were literally all over the place in the game. It was a genuinely good fun game, um, like a really good fun game. We. Our dice went from the sublime to the ridiculous and back again. Um, but yeah, in his movement phase, when it was be on the right hand flank, where it was being very sort of stop start and a little bit of standoffish, he proceeded to fail his stupidity test on his called one bus on LD ten, and and fail it again with the BSB reroll. Yeah, that's the Elven um, way, and that was the start of the end for the Dark Elves. To be honest. <laughs> Because at the next turn, I could charge him rather than getting charged. Um, and even though only one of my units made it in, it was my chariot. And would you believe they made it into the flank? Um, and although I did I did a few wounds on impact hits, um, I ended up pinning him in combat because he could only get like two people into it. And even though it was his lord, like, he's only got four attacks, five of whatever attacks he's got. Like, he was only doing a couple of wounds a turn. So because I had a flank and a banner, like I was essentially just staying there um, until eventually I got a me, I think me skeleton bus got in there as well and I ground him away on rank bonus and broke him and ran him down. Um, and I think at the end of the game he had he's well, it was one warlock left holding their points, disgusting animals. He's level two sorceress. And I think some dark dark knights, and I'd lost a unit of archers, me snakes, um, and I think that was it. But it was a it was a good game, uh, really, really pivoted in a big way when he failed those back to back stupidity tests. That's painful. That. Um, it was massive. It was a big it was a big swing in the game, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it was a really fun game. Like our dice were just. All over the place. We both had a good. It was the last game as well, so you, it was nice to finish on a bit of a on a high as far as a good positive game when we both like, made a few silly mistakes after you know game three. I think sometimes it happens, um, but no, it was it was good good fun, and it meant by the end of the event, I finished the event on eleven skulls to take into the next narrative. Mm. And it means three events in, um, I'm unbeaten in Scotland. <laughs> well, so, there's a honour. Take that, Scot- take that, Scotland. <laughs> Even after introducing them to uh, filth, he's still unbeaten. Filth Master General. He didn't win. That. Never taken a non positive list, though. Well, only by two points, isn't it? Two. Comp points. Well, one on this one. Oh, yeah. Skirt never so close to that minus zone. Yeah. Uh, so that was my last game. It was good fun. A nice way to end the tournament. Well, my last game was against the aforementioned list of death. Uh, that was disgusting. Yeah. Liam's Dark Elves. Yeah. So you'll see. Call them Dark Elves in the loosest possible term. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. Ashamed. <laughs> So you um weather table rolled off again, got the short range thing again. Um The weather really screwed you it, over, it, didn't it? It really did, because I rolled the one way I can move my unit eight inches forward. So I thought brilliant, I'll move the sisters forward, which I did there, because they can now shoot at the um 
warlocks at the top there or the chariot or whatever. Uh, but then, of course, half range happened, so screw that idea. Uh, ideally, I would have liked to be on the opposite side because there's a great big hill here obscuring lines of sight and stuff, so my deployment was crap, really, because the, the general... I didn't want the Phoenix Guard up. I wanted them because that's where all the points are. So I wanted them as far back as possible because I didn't fancy until I can w shoot them witches down a bit or think of something to deal with the steam tank in Kadai, of, of course. Um, I just wanted them away until I could think of something to do with them. But because there's a big hill in the middle, that's now breaking all the lines of sight. So that wasn't ideal. Um, but anyway, he gets... First turn, I think. Yeah, he does. So he charges that chariot into the um, sisters. Uh, and it survives on one wound. And that combat just lasts forever. It lasts for about four or five turns. Uh, they can't hit um, and they can't wound. But because they're still steadfast, they don't break. So that that chariot is doing about two or three kills a turn but they're still steadfast, so they're not going anywhere. So I can't put the the spearmen in to help because the, there's no way for them to go. So that was annoying. Um, so anyway, everything comes forward. Uh, the warlocks sort of get in the middle by the, the bolt thrower. They destroy that with um, Doom Bolt. Shotgun. Sure, as you do. Uh, so I think the, the steam tank and the Kadai come up um, on my left side. So I just think, well, let's see if Shadow Magic can help you here. So I, I run the archers into the steam tank and get Mind Razor off on them. They, they bring it down to one wound, um, destroy it in his turn, I think, and turn around. Um, so the eagles there is blocking the Kadai. So this is just a, a massive delaying action. I'm pa I cast um, my asthma and get a three for movement on the witch star twice i think so that's slowed down so i'm basically just like to try to kill get some snipe some points off the side and delay that for as long as possible um so i kill the steam tank uh hold them up the kadai kills the eagle he'll be stunned here shocked uh the kadai right so marathi keeps going to either side of the phoenix guard and casts black horror um and phenomenally uh, i think in two mass big casts i think i lose 10 phoenix guards because of the, the the syrian is just looking out over them at this point um, so that, the amount of four ups i made in there is phenomenal because i think these play it well the card says you take a ward save against it indeed um uh, so playing with rules as written um so they managed to survive that the you can't see it but the um the witch star is about just behind the kadai i assume the uh, the spearmen didn't do as well with the kadai as they did with the steam tank uh, the, no, the the, in that unit the spearmen ended up fighting the their equivalents and oh. you know when you th like I cast, they somehow lost the combat. Even though there's the fighting in more ranks, the hatred had worn off, and they had the dark elves had withering on them, but they didn't do any wounds, and the dark elves made all of their saves, and so they ended up losing. Like, what's going on here? That's not right. All the advantages are in in my favour here, but anyway, that's just the way that it's a dice game. Indeed. So the, the before this happens, um, the this bit here. The witches are right where they could next behind the Kadai, and they're probably going to get a charge off on the um, Phoenix Guard the next turn. So I just sacrifice the BSB, angle them so this is turn five. So they'd hit them in turn five, overrun after that, and could only turn around in turn six, so they wouldn't actually get to fight anything. Nice. So that that saved them. Got Mind Razor off on a miscast um, at this point. Uh, he lost D3 wizard levels, but I'm not bothered at this point. Uh, so the Phoenix Guard kill the Kadai. Um, I lose the bolt thrower. Uh, I lose the spearman and the... Oh, there you go. So yeah, so they're being dragged that way by this heroic sacrifice of the 
BSB. My team player. Yeah. Well, you know, for the greater good. Indeed. <laughs> um, he kills the spearman, uh, kills the rest of the sisters eventually managed to get a wound off on the chariot and kill it but there's only two of them left at that point so they get killed by the peg master the Pegasus yeah. master uh, and that's about it at the end so when it's all totaled up uh, I lost 13-7 but I was I wasn't unhappy with that because <laughs> and for once what... you have the moral high ground well yeah <laughs> what you do right at one point, he he over he big cast a doom bolt with the uh, warlocks. Did three wounds to himself and passed all four ward saves. So, that, so your miscast got four d six strength five hits off, and nothing bad has happened at all. And he can still cast. So Standard. Standard. yeah, but uh, I'm not I'm not really complaining. It's a dice game. Yeah. I got I got some clutch. Um, Cast off with Mind Razor with a miscast just exactly when I needed it to be able to kill the Kadai. So I can't really complain about that. I sacrificed the archers into the side of the um, witches at one point, again, just to slow them down. And because then they had to overrun, I hit them in the side, so they had to overrun towards the long side of the, the board away from the Phoenix Guard and the rest of the stuff. So that saved yeah. me a, a turn for them to turn around and come back. Um, so it was almost like a delaying game and see what points I could chip off. I tried to shoot Marathi. She's down to a wound there, I think, or two wounds. Um, but the, the bolt thought... Yeah, I, I don't know what wound when I played it as well. Yeah, it's just taking that last one. It's just it's just actually quite hard to... Without the weight of fire from the archers who were dead, it's hard to do. Um, but yeah, 13-7 at the end. Uh, happy, quite happy with that. It's... Uh, I, I thought I'd just be like, oh, like curb stomped by a Kadai steam tank and a witch star backed up by some uh, Doomfire Warlocks and Marathi blast and everything. So, uh, draw, win, loss, a perfectly ah. average um, <laughs> standard performance standard in that regard. Performance, yeah. Um, yeah, so that was. The, the last game, so I, I came 10th, I think. Uh, there's three of us had 44 points at the end. I think it was 44. Yeah, 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 yeah three of you. Yeah, but um, I had the lowest kill points or uh, victory points. So it was 10th overall. However, I did win the best painted army. You did, and uh, to be fair, like, it was well deserved. I. For what it's worth, I did vote for your army. Uh, oh, there was thank a couple you. of armies. You, were, you, know, you can tell us a lot of people, more, the, the, the scene is growing up there, and there's a lot less painted than you may see elsewhere. Um, there was a couple of nice armies, yours, um, Mark's, High Elves yeah, as well, are really nice. Really nice. Uh, in fact, to be honest, I voted for Mark, I think, last time. Um, for the first time, either way, uh, it is a lovely high elf army as well. Um, but I was well deserved. Your army's really nice, uh, genuinely. Uh, Which is, is, is to say it. It's got pride of place, that uh, whiskey glass on a shelf now. So Good. Uh, Andy won the event overall. He's plus he 10. He's, he's plus 10. Yeah. What I would say is, on a, on a one-day event, the comp score is, much, is a yeah. much bigger deal. Um, well, I came, I came third, and he he beat me by nine points, which, which is exactly the difference in our comp score. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Yeah. Um, oh, well. Probably unfinished game two, which is what I'm I'm telling it is. But uh, no, it was Andy won. Uh, Andy got the most kill, most victory points as well. He got high, um, two his, Highlander as well. Yeah, with his his uh, beastman, the, the the new stealth filth, Bongrin. <laughs> Honestly, Boomgren are giants, man. They're just outrageous. You can still shoot them with archers, though. That's the, the put, uh, got, plus there. I've got 10 wounds, though. Yeah, I've got 30 archers. But uh, no, it was a cracking event. Like Andy uh, won it um, with his beastman, which was cool. Uh, good fun event. It didn't have a... Like, there's nobody up there that you play against who's, who's a, who gives you a bad game. 
No, um, I really enjoyed it. And uh, if I can get the time off, I'll go to the next one. Yep, yeah, I fully intend to go to the next one. Um, always, always a good fun. It's it's a it's a long it's a long trip for a, a one day, um, but it's a beautiful drive up there once you get sort of north of Edinburgh. Yeah, it's uh, um, it's well worth. It's, yeah, it's, it is. If, if you can sort of, if anyone can um, make the time to go, I, I would recommend it. I mean, we made the most of that day, that travel day. Went to Fort George, saw some dolphins, um, and then had a whiskey or a beer later on in the evening. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, Inverness itself. Yeah. Um, we've got like we said the stuff I really liked about it was the the theme the the fact that he'd gone to such uh, extent to do the terrain and the terrain rules and the the weather charts and stuff like that so I really like that um the stuff you would change I mean uh, the the mercenary thing I think these yeah well, to be honest, I, think look he, at. I think he has looked at that for the next event now I think you can still take them. Uh, you can't hit them though. I think they now come out your special allowance, and you need to take a car a character and then a core unit before you can take a rare unit. That sounds more, which is so good. it looks like more like a force rather than you take a witch hunter just so you can get in a steam tank. Yeah, for example, um, which I think is a, I think is a good change. Um, and you know, Rich is sort of always willing to take feedback um, and uh, evolve the comp. At, I think the whole idea of the skulls was really cool and summoning zombies was very cool. I wish you could do more with them if you didn't have yeah. the models to do I, summon zombies. I, um, I was thinking about maybe the more skulls you get, you could get like... Like if you get five skulls, you can give a unit frenzy or magic resistance. Or... Yeah, I don't think to be fair though, I know he is using that. Like they are doing something more with them. For the next event, is me understanding. Um, but how many how skulls you, did you finish on? I finished on four. I finished on eleven. <laughs> you get slightly more than me, then. So they better have something cool next time because I've been <laughs> stockpiling those bad boys. You can, you can um, irresistibly cast any um, top level spell to sacrifice an eleven spell, uh, seven skulls. Constantly Take cast up the sun. But skull but skull. It's a school storm, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, but it's how you balance it because you want to reward people who are putting in the effort oh, to yeah, 100%. model it. Yeah. And rather than just saying, oh, yeah, you can, you can convert your skulls into, you know, you give them a unit stubborn or it causes fear. I, no, no, I think uh, it's, it. it's, a, it's a tough balance with it. Um, and it was nice that the were used to just encourage, genuinely just to encourage people to like, convert some models and get into the theme of it. But that's that's now really that the, nah, that's the aim, aim of it. It was very good. Yeah, I um, really enjoyed it. Um, and the next event, um, if anyone is interested, is in is on the twenty first of October. Yeah, this year, still in Lustria. Still in Lustria. We're so moving he, on from the Ebony Schools. We're now on to the pillars of Sortec. So he doesn't have to redo a load of terrain. Yeah, I mean, he's, he built a lot of trees, didn't he? <laughs> so he should be deserts next, so he can't use them all. Yeah, <laughs> um, but no, I'm with I'm with you. It was a it was a good fun event. Like I say, I've I've never had a bad event up there. It is very much is a fun like narrative feel to it. Um, and I'll be trying to go back again. Well, I won something, so I'm very happy. I'll never shut up about for forever now. You can take a different army to the next one and see if you can win. Uh, Best painted with your demons. Uh, hmm, we'll see. <laughs> we've, got to, we've got to October, haven't we? So, October. Plenty of time to pay, pay in special key and the two, the two soul grinders. Soul grinders. <laughs> yeah, could theoretically do that. We'll I'm see. Faith in I'm not promising anything. Worst comes to worst, I can definitely get this dragon death mage painted. It's like a kid eye in the background there. Well, it's well timed. The- <laughs> the, the dog the dog's demand and attention right you know then um well we're off to triple crown this weekend so we back will to back weekends of gaming yeah of course Bloody hell. Uh, dedication we will try to we can't do a preview of that because we've run out of time um but we'll try to do a re- review see how we do with that no guesses as to what i'm taking but uh 
Say, are you Tomb King still? Well, yeah, indeed. It, the, the year of the Tomb King continues. <laughs> Dog's happy with it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much. Um, again, uh, we'll see what happens at Triple Crown. Essex, here we come. <laughs>